What's up guys, this is Adam from Properly Wound coming at you with another review. So today we have a nice little face-off, a two-for-one combo for you guys featuring two Tudor classics in the making. Um, I guess you could probably even call these modern classics at this point already um, due to the different changes that Tudor has been undergoing even over just the last couple of years with some of their models. Um, so we have two kind of mainstays in the Tudor lineup. I think I would probably call these two of the three most popular watches in their lineup. Uh, right here we have the Tudor North Flag, and on the right, this represents kind of the modern, and then over here we have the Tudor Black Bay Heritage with the red bezel. The OG with the ETA movement, as you can see with the Smiley Text logo on the bottom, and the Tudor Rose, which I will show you guys. There you go. Um, this one has the Tudor Rose logo at the top as opposed to the shield that a lot of the Black Bays have now. So quick shout out to um, Homer, two personal friends of mine, Homer, um, who is also a member of the Properly, Properly Wound Facebook page. Um, thank you so much, Homer, for letting me borrow this. Uh, it came in handy, especially for this review. You guys have probably seen this uh, in a couple other YouTubers' videos as well. It's the same exact North flag. Uh, props to Homer for wearing this thing. As you guys can see, this thing really has some battle scars on it. And to our own Patrick Ma, who is the uh, one of the moderators in the Properly Won Facebook group. Um, great guy. Knows, a, knows his shit, too. So um, this was actually one of his, I think, Technically, his his first real kind of grail that he purchased. This was his first foray into expensive watches. So, guys, we're gonna do a little uh, showcase. There's plenty of um, articles and videos talking about the stats and sort of the specifications of these watches. So I'm kind of gonna briefly touch on those, but I'm more so gonna talk touch on um, which watch is for which person. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're either just watching it for the entertainment value because you love watches, or you're seriously considering um, maybe a Pelagos, a Tudor, uh, a Tudor Black Bay, or a, uh, a North Flag. So hopefully, maybe this will make you help you guys make your decision. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to start off with the uh, the Heritage Black Bay. So as you guys know, this came out a little while ago. I think about five years ago. This made its uh, its debut at Basel World. Um, this is the Tudor Heritage Black Bay. So this takes a lot of cues from a lot of different watches. As you guys can see, the snowflake hands. Um, I'm sure many of you for, are familiar with the with the Tudor snowflakes from the uh, from the 70s and the 80s. Um, and it takes uh, some cues from some of the old Rolexes and Tudors of the 50s and 60s with the big crown, the no crown guard. Um, and that sort of classic gilt style dial. So now I think, so there have been, there's a big trend of a lot of different heritage divers um, as of late, probably I'd say like the last, uh, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six years um, between like the Aura 65, all these reissues with fake patina on them from major brands. Um, but I think Tudor with their heritage, they've done a really good job of creating kind of a contemporary piece that pays homage to a lot of Tudor and Rolex Submariners of the past. So I think when it comes to heritage style reissues and homages from the last almost, you know, better part of a decade, I'd say maybe half a decade at this point, I got to give it to Tudor. I think the Black Bay is one of the greatest examples um, of a very classy and well done um, heritage diver. So um, when this first came out, as you guys may or may not know, the Tudor Black Bay now only features the in-house movement. And this is kind of like the mainstay of the actual Tudor lineup. The North Flag and the Pelagos are, are pretty popular, but the Black Bay is really the one that I think has taken off for them in terms of revenue. Um, and I think anyone would be able to guess that by seeing all the ridiculous amount of versions that they have the Black Bay now. They have the steel on the steel, the blue, the black, the bronze. They have the two-tone now. They have different versions of the bronze as well now. The Brucker or uh, the blue one, that's the limited edition. So it's definitely one of the more popular ones. Now, uh, this, this uh, particular Black Bay houses the... ETA 2824, which might be kind of controversial for some people. 
uh, or maybe it was when it first came out because of the fact that this is a $3,000 watch, give or take retail. Um, you can get these for about $2,000, both of these watches for about $2,000-ish, uh, a little over $2,000 on the used market now. But um, I think one of the biggest gripes people had um, was the fact that this watch came with an Eta 2824, and you can find Eta 2824s in watches like Hamilton's um, and some other Swiss watches that are well under a thousand bucks. So for me, it wasn't really that big of a deal because I'm, I think you're really paying for sort of the uniqueness of this watch and the actual fit and finish, um, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and it also pays homage to the tutors of the past. So as you guys, again, may or may not know, Tudor um, is, was an offshoot of Rolex. I was basically made to be a cheaper version of Rolex that had the same fit and finish, the beautiful oyster cases, but just a slightly cheaper budget-friendly movement so that these you know could be sold for a little bit cheaper than the standard Rolex. Um, and that's why I'm kind of okay with the Eta 2824 being in these original Black Bays it's because it's uh, very true to the original. Kind of like when I talked about in the uh, Panerai video, I don't know if you guys have seen that, released uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how Panerai originally had Rolex movements, so I'm totally okay with it having just a base kind of pocket watch style Unitas movement in it. Anyways, so, um, and what the great thing about this too now is these didn't have a super long run, the actual Edo ones. Now that Tudor has their in-house movement, I can only imagine that they're going to be moving forward with that in-house movement for decades to come. It'll probably just be constantly be upgrades of that. So this ETA Black Bay is now almost kind of seen as a little bit of a collector's item. Um, it has the uh, Tudor Rose logo just above the Tudor text there, which is was now replaced by the shield. Um, and it has the smiley text, the self-winding there on the bottom, you guys can see, has a, a little curve to it at the bottom. So these are kind of signature items of the Tudor Black Bay that a lot of people um, are fond of. And I'm definitely one of those people. And I think the black version was made, the ETA Black Bay Black was only made for, I think, a total run of something like 10 months. So those might even climb in value and become a little bit more collect collectible. Um, in the future down the line, maybe in a decade or so. But most of these ETAs are have sort of, I think, hit their rock bottom. Um, you can find some of these on leather for, for under a thousand bucks. But, oh, and before any of you guys ask, I know you're going to. Um, this is a Bulling and Sun strap. I know it looks absolutely amazing on this thing. Great choice, uh, Pat. This is a killer combo. Um, so in terms of the actual case, I mean, it's a pretty standard oyster looking case. Um, one of the couple of things that I wanted to note, uh, it is a very tall watch and there aren't any, um, any curves to the side of the watch. So it does feel thick on the wrist. It's sort of like just this giant great wall sitting on top of your wrist. There's no curves to sort of give off the impression that it may appear a little bit, uh, thinner than it actually is, but it is nice that the actual case back here isn't a kind of like a bubble sort of style case back like a lot of the Rolexes have, um, especially a lot of the, the older Rolexes, um, and it sort of just sits flat and flush with the case, the actual case itself. So this is 316 L steel. Um, a couple of things I guess I can note uh, are the, um, the snowflake hands. Um, and the snowflake second hand and the hour hand. Um, the bezel is definitely one of the better bezels I've ever I've ever had. And I, this has always been sort of a, uh, one of the things I love about the Tudor. Um, very, very pronounced click. It almost sounds like a taser. Uh, it feels unlike any other bezel I've ever experienced. Um, the Tudor Black Bay definitely has that going for it. And it's nice, the, uh, the coinage bezel is isn't too sharp. It's nice and sort of, uh, finely finished there. So it's nice to, it's pretty easy to grip without feeling sharp or anything. Um, another thing that I do love is the, uh, the red accent on the tube on the blue and it's blue and on the Tudor Black Bay black it is black. Um, nice fat crown, which I really do like. Um, I'm not a huge fan of crown guards. So, um, I do sort of like that nod to the, to the old divers of old with that. And it also has the 
rose logo on the crown side. Um, so overall, really great watch, um, especially for the, the values that you can get them now. Um, they're a little bit cheaper now, around 2000 a little over 2000 with the bracelet. Bracelet's fantastic, standard oyster clasp. I'll kind of talk about the bracelet when I get to the Tudor because this is pretty much the exact same bracelet. It's just a little bit thicker. Um, obviously, the, the North Flags bracelet is integrated, so we'll get to that in a second. All right, guys, so the Tudor North Flag, a pretty polarizing watch. Um, I think for this one, it's for a lot of people, this is kind of a hit or miss. Um, I think a lot of people also don't really realize that this actually does have some history to it. Uh, the Tudor Ranger 2 um, had an integrated bracelet and looked a lot like this, had some yellow accents. So this is a not an entire homage, but it does pay some homage to the uh, Tudor Ranger 2 of old. A lot of you will probably be uh, probably recognize the Tudor Ranger, which looks like a lot like an oversized Rolex Explorer. Um, <clears throat> well, there was a Tudor Ranger 2 in the 70s, so check that out if you're unaware. Um, so the Tudor Ranger, my initial thoughts on this. So I had only held this thing once before. I've never actually lived with it as opposed to this. I've, I've owned the black, the blue, and the bronze versions of this. Um, but I've never actually kind of like lived a day in the life with the Tudor North flag. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. So I think one of the first things you have to note is that pictures really don't do this piece justice. Um, when it comes to the finishing, the angles, the way it uh, reflects light in person, it's just a whole nother animal. And I'm hoping that you guys can see as I'm twisting this around some of the things that I'm talking about. Um, it almost sort of reminds me of uh, not the finishing itself, but the way it reflects on its sharp edges. Um, it kind of reminds me of Grand Seiko a little bit. Their, Grand Seiko is really famous for their Zeratsu finishing, but more so with the whole grammar of design thing that, that Seiko, um, that Grand Seiko always bases their pieces off around. Um, one of the big things on them is having these defined edges so that light catches it and makes it really, really stand out. So um, gotta love the finish. The bracelet, I mean, what can I say about the bracelet? It's an integrated bracelet. Either you love it or you hate it, or maybe you can live with it, but it's usually people are on one side of the spectrum or the other. Um, personally, I love it. I think that the right watches with the right integrated bracelets are fantastic, uh, the Tudor North Flag being one of them. Obviously, other iconic watches like the Patek Nautilus, the AP Royal Oak, um, <clears throat> a couple other Vacheron overseas. A lot of other watches have these sort of uh, integrated bracelets that they uh, become popular for um, in some ways. And I think the Tudor North Flag is definitely one of those, an, an example of an integrated bracelet done really, really well. So I think probably the most polarizing part about this watch, um, other than the integrated bracelet, is probably the dial itself. I think some people aren't really fans of the yellow accent and sort of like the modern uh, markers and the 12 and the 6, how they're sort of in a modern font and the sort of modern-esque uh, power reserve. I'm going to actually show you guys in real time how quickly that winds. So I'm going to crank this sucker up and you guys can probably see that arrow slowly already moving up. So it actually winds pretty quickly and it is kind of cool to see that, but I guess it is a little bit redundant when you do have an automatic watch, um, which this is. Uh, it's Tudor's in-house movement, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but, you know, I... I can see how the the dial might be a little bit of a turnoff, but to be honest, um, I think it brings a little bit of uniqueness because I don't think there's a lot of watch brands that have a um, a watch that looks so new. So one other really cool thing is they have this ceramic bezel here on the outside between the steel and the steel bezel on top. Um, and I guess there are probably are some functional reasons for that. Uh, that a couple of the people have mentioned in some YouTube videos. But apart from that, I think it adds to the look as well. Um, I think this is one of those watches that if it was just all steel, um, it might be a little bit too much or might look a little too boring. 
So I really like that ceramic bezel ring that's kind of right underneath the top layer, this top steel layer. Um, I think it adds an entire new dimension to the look. So do uh, do have to give it to uh, to Tudor for kind of creating that new look that I've never seen on a watch before. Um, we'll get to the bracelet and then we'll talk about the movement. So the bracelet itself, um, I can't say enough about this bracelet. There's a certain quality, uh, a tangible feel that you actually get when you're handling this bracelet. Uh, and I really urge you guys to go check out an authorized dealer if you can. Um, it, there's just something about the consistency and how smooth it feels. Um, there's, it almost feels like it's oiled so well. Um, but of course it's not, it's just, it's so, I don't even know how to describe it to be honest. Um, just the way the links feel as they bend, everything's so consistent and it's extremely smooth on the skin as well. Um, which is really nice. It really just reminds me of, of the really, really iconic, uh, Rolex oyster bracelets to be honest. And then of course it does have the, um, the ball bearing clasp here, um, which is great. So to the movement. So the movement housed in this watch is the MT5621. So that's what I think we'll make what will make the Tudor North Flag uh, a future icon is the fact that this is the first Tudor that had the first in-house movement. So it's a 70 hour power reserve. I had a very similar one in my Tudor Black Bay Bronze which is absolutely incredible. Um, it has a 70 hour power reserve, which really, really is nice. Um, it actually does make a big difference to have a 70 power power reserve over say like a, a 40 that you find it in a 2824. Uh, 70 hour power reserve, it has a silicone balance spring and it has a free sprung balance. So it is kind of cool how you can see the movement to see. Back. It's a pretty standard utilitarian looking type movement. Um, but, uh, yeah, super super accurate. It's cost certified as, certified as well, which is I believe is a a first for Tudor. So, absolutely excellent movement, and it's really cool that the Tudor North Flag is the kind of pioneer for Tudor's in-house movement in the modern era of Tudor. So, as you guys can tell, I really do love both of these watches. Um, closing thoughts: Who are these four? Which one would you pick? Which one would I pick? Um, I'll get to the last question first. Honestly, it's a complete toss up. I absolutely love the Tudor Black Bay. I've owned a couple of them. Um, the Tudor North Flag, I think might get a little bit of an edge in my book because of its uniqueness um, and the integrated bracelet. I'm kind of a sucker for really, really good integrated bracelets. I love the IWC Ingenieur, even the Oris Aquis. Um, those are sort of the only bracelet watches that I really love to wear. Um, the ones that are integrated. Other than that, I usually opt for leather or NATO straps. So I think I would choose the Tudor, um, purely based on the bracelet, the movement and the uniqueness of it. And I do kind of enjoy that it is a polarizing watch and I tend to like the more polarizing watches, I think in general. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a really quick loom shot um, since we sort of already went over all the stats and everything just to show you guys. So as you can see, the camera is now back in focus. The uh, Tudor on the right, the Heritage Black Bay, actually shines a little bit brighter. It has a um, it has green superluminova, I believe. Um, and on the left, you can see the North flag has a little bit more of a bluish tint to it. Um, maybe not even just a little bit more, but a much more bluish tint to it. Uh, and it's not as strong. And these have been sitting under the light, the same light for the same amount of time. So pretty obvious um, and probably as expected, the true dive watch here on the right has the better loom. So while the Tudor North flag is a pioneer when it comes to the first in-house Tudor movement. Um, I think that it should be noted that the ETA Black Bay um, is also a, I think a modern classic already, but it also has the potential to be a little bit more collectible um, in the future and sort of more of an icon as the the watch, specifically the Black Bay that really kick-started 
the rise of Tudor. Um, now, as you guys can see, they're pouring so much money into it with Lady Gaga, David Beckham as ambassadors. Um, so I think Tudor is definitely here to stay. Um, and I think now might be the time to buy these Tudor Black, Bay, Black Bays as well. Um, I think the North Flag still might even have some room for depreciation, but I think the Tudor Black Bays have kind of hit rock bottom for now. So um, I think Tudors might be the, the Black Bay might be the one to go for. But in terms of watches that you actually want to own, enjoy, and live with, um, I'm pretty sure that at this point in the video, you've probably made your own decision. Um, <clears throat> they're two very different watches. One has a much more classical look to it. As you can see, it looks, it completely changes the look when it's on a vintage style leather too. Um, it looks almost more like a vintage Rolex. Um, the vintage subs that you see on Instagram on, uh, really cool vintage straps as opposed to this one. So, um, it's really up to personal taste. And the thing is with the Tudor Black Bay, if you do want the same in-house movement that you see in the North Flag, you can easily just get a newer Tudor Black Bay and uh, not have to pay that much more than the ETA version. So overall, both super heavyweights in the Tudor lineup. Um, you really can't go wrong with either of them, guys. So um, with that said, follow us on Properly Wound on the Properly Wound F Facebook, Properly Wound Instagram. And hopefully we can interact with you guys there. See you guys in the next review.